Okay, Jaffe, before we do this video, I need to have your promise, your word, that you will not immediately stick your beak inside of my nostril if I am trying to say something serious. Okay? Do you agree? Have your word? Okay. Right. I'm back again. Um, I'm aware that I think only really two people uh, were kind of with me this morning, but I am going to continue to attempt to do these live feeds and hopefully it will help you. Don't forget that just because they're live during that time doesn't mean that they aren't still up and available on my channel. So if you still want to get your dinner, your breakfast, your lunch, whatever, sit with me, eat with me and watch those videos at the same time, then if you find that helpful, that would be great. Uh, meanwhile, what I wanted to talk about this evening um, is managing mental health and eating disorders whilst self-isolating or just in general when services are less available, which for obvious reasons right now they are. Um, but hopefully this will be relevant in the future when this is all over. And by the way, it will all be over. Um, so my first uh, thing that I want to recommend is to keep routine. Um, so try to plan certain things in your life to fill up your time um, and to kind of help you manage. Obviously, this is something that we all struggle and try to do anyway, um, but that's because we all know that it's very important. Um, so when I say to plan a routine, generally planning a time to kind of get up, putting certain things at certain times during the day. And if you do have an eating disorder or actually even if you don't have an eating disorder, it can be helpful to write a meal plan, particularly during the stage of um, possible self isolation um, or if we are in lockdown or anything like that. Uh, it can be helpful to have a meal plan because also it means that you can get in the food for that meal plan without bulk buying, which a lot of people without eating disorders and without a meal plan tend to do um, anyway to make sure they've got things around. But it can prevent you from bulk buying, which could trigger binge eating and um, binging and purging and generally be unhelpful. Um, but it can prevent you from completely running out as well. If you make sure that you have the food to be adequate for your meal plan, and possibly back up, um, like a backup option or a backup plan, um, then I think that can really help. Um, and like I say, it can be helpful to someone without an eating disorder anyway to help plan and establish that day and make sure that you're maintaining your physical health, which can be very difficult with a mental illness uh, anyway. Along with that, think about ways that you can look after yourself so if you think about what for you personally makes good well-being if you if you have a think for a second and think what is good for my well-being i need to have good mental and emotional health i need to have a good relationship with whoever it is relationships in my life i need to be physiologically okay so that's eating well sleeping well having enough water um being comfortable you know you need that safety and belonging so make a plan maybe to tidy your home for a certain amount of time each day. Uh, so things like that and having plans for puzzles, for writing, for uh, time alone if you need that and you live with someone or time to be creative to help your kind of emotional and mental well-being. Then again, factoring that into your plan for your routine and how you're going to structure your day could be really helpful. Um, so moving on from that, Another thing that can be helpful is to limit um, media. So obviously not just during COVID-19, um, but all the way through life, the media can bombard, uh, can bombard us completely with negativity because it sells. Uh, and it's very easy to get um, stuck down a rabbit hole of obsessing over certain things. There's the obvious thing of coronavirus right now, doing research, research, research. Um, often people with eating disorders can research and research and research food or, um, you know, people obsess over lots of different things and it's very easy to go right down that dark ditch and it can make things feel um, very stagnant in your head. Um, 
So obviously it's difficult to do that, especially right now. Uh, so one thing that you could do, because it is still important to stay informed, to know what advice you need to be taking um, in situations and to know what's happening in the world. Uh, what I would suggest could be helpful is to structure in a set time in your day that you are allowed to go to a trusted resource um, that's not just a herd of opinion, but actually, you know, um, reliable source of information or to even talk to someone who, you know, will give you the information in a helpful, supportive way. Um, and also factor in some time after that where you're doing something else, distracting yourself. So potentially you could at uh, six o'clock go on to your in the UK. We've got the Gov website. Go on to that. Find out the latest advice. And then after you're done reading that for 10, 15 minutes, structure in some time where you're going to read a book afterwards. Or if you need something a bit more stimulating, then actually have a phone call with someone afterwards. Something to distract you and to move you on. And possibly structuring in a phone call with someone means you can actually talk through what your worries are as well, because that's another thing that is really, really important during this time, staying connected and letting people know that you're stressed, letting people know that you're doing OK, letting people know how you are. Um, so my next thought um, or my next suggestion to you um, would be to think before you act, to think before you act um, and to really, really try to gain control and own the control that you do have over your actions. So right now, it can feel like there is a lot of things completely out of your control. And there are. There are an awful lot of things out of all of our control right now. Um, in general, in life, there will always be lots of things like that. And often with mental illness, with addiction, with eating disorders, you can feel totally out of control because things trigger your emotions, you react to your emotions and you look at your eating disorder, you look at your addiction, you look at these things, you think I absolutely cannot fight this at all. It's huge. It's bigger than me. And actually, yeah, I know. And actually, it's not. It is a decision. Everything that we do, every time somebody who self harms cuts themselves, every time somebody who binges and purges, binges and purges, every time you choose to restrict in your meal, not have enough food, every time you don't get out of bed in the morning because the world feels too dark and too difficult, that is actually a decision. And it's really, really important during this time to recognise and own that you do have control over it that it is a decision. And even if you feel unable to do that thing right now, it doesn't actually mean that you are unable. You're always able, it's just always a decision. So yeah, really, really try to own that control that you do have and think before you act. Every time you make a small decision, think about whether you are reacting or if you can change that action that you're making. Sorry if that's a bit rambly. Anyway, so uh, I mentioned that staying connected is really important. That obviously is always important in life, but especially during um, times where services are very limited uh, and face-to-face -face contact might be very limited. Uh, it's really, really important to stay connected. Um, so that can be using phone calls and things like that. There are also loads of communities online and things which I'm going to put links below to some of the UK resources and please comment uh, to recommend any that you know are useful in your area if you're not in the UK like me. Um, and so yeah, visit that, come on these videos and things like this and perhaps set up phone calls and video calls with friends, family, loved ones. And if you find that hard, um, then you could even try to plan activities. So, for example, you could both go on a video call or on a phone call and press play on a series that you agreed to watch together or a film together. Um, and then you don't have to be talking the whole time, but you've still got company. 
another thing that you could do is you could both agree that you're going to read a book from page 10 to 20 or whatever. Both of you go off, read the book during the day, whatever, check in at, say, six o'clock on a Friday. And how did you find that bit? How was that? Did you enjoy this? Da, da, da. Something to discuss. Um, find games you can play over the phone, things like that. Find other activities that you can do to just really um, make that connection easier because it is stressful if you feel like you're going to run out of things to say as well. Um, so I think I will leave it there really, except for the one last little thing, which is uh, to remember that this is all temporary. Um, you know, try very hard to combat those internal thoughts of negativity and fear. This isn't going to last forever. Um, and sometimes saying a kind of mantra to yourself or writing something and putting it on the wall to kind of remind yourself that this is temporary or that, you know, you can do this and that you don't have anything to, you know, be ashamed or guilty over and the things that you're scared of are reasonable, but they're not over powering you will get through this and you are more than capable of getting through this having something like that a reminder can be really helpful so that's the video for tonight <laughs> um let me know your thoughts and comments below obviously and tomorrow at 10 a.m uh i will be coming on to have food with you again and I am planning on having pasta with salad and a cup of soy milk uh, and I am hoping to do some doodling with you so bring paper and pens and let's get doodling in the morning see you again soon